Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 21st of January. India's PM Modi Nepalese counterpart jointly inaugurate border check post. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya says thousands of war missing are dead. And eight Indian tourists die after falling unconscious at Nepal Resort. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Nepalese counterpart K.P. Sharma Oli on Tuesday jointly inaugurated a common check post in Nepal remotely through video link. India and Nepal agreed to develop integrated check posts at border points because of constraints of existing facilities and its impact on traffic, regulatory process and surveillance at the existing trade routes. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Nepalese counterpart K.P. Sharma Oli on Tuesday jointly inaugurated the second integrated check post at Jogbani Biratnagar along the border. The project was launched jointly by the two leaders via video conference. The integrated check post has been built with India's assistance in a bid to facilitate trade and people's movement between the two countries. This is the second integrated check post on the Nepal border. The first was built at the Raksol Birganj border in 2018. Both the Prime Ministers also witnessed the progress in Indian assisted post-2015 earthquake housing reconstruction projects in Nepal. Nepal ke chahumukhi vikas mein Nepal ki prathmiktao ke anusar Bharat ek viswasniya partner ki bhumika ada karta raha hai. Neighborhood first, Mary Sarkarki Prathmikta Rahi hai. Or cross border connectivity ko badhana is policy ka ek pramuk de hai. Our relations have scaled, scaled new height and acquired dynamism in recent years. I am of the view that by working together in a spirit of friendship, friendliness, and accommodation, we can expand the scope and enrich the substance of bilateral relations. Oli later extended an invitation to Prime Minister Modi to visit Kathmandu, saying that the visit will provide the two countries to chart the course of action for the future. One Indian Army soldier and a special police officer lost their lives in an encounter with terrorists in Pulwama district of India's Damun Kashmir on Tuesday. The encounter broke out in Avantipura in the district after joint search operations were launched by the Indian Army, paramilitary CRPF and the police over specific inputs about the presence of terrorists. This came a day after three terrorists belonging to Pakistan-based Hezbollah Mujahideen were gunned down by security forces in Shopian district of Jammu and Kashmir. Moving on, Shafi Barfat, the chairman of GA Sindh, Mutahida Mehez, has announced that prominent Muhajir leader Altaf Hussain will be the head of the Sindhudesh government in exile. Sindhudesh is an idea of a separate homeland for Sindhis proposed by Sindhi nationalist parties. Chairman of J. Sin Mutahida Mahas or JSMM, Shafi Burfat has announced that Altaf Hussain, the founder leader of Mutahida Qaumi Movement or MQM, will be the head of the Sindhu Desh government in exile. In an interview to a US-based Urdu web channel, Burfat said that his party will form the government in exile for Sindhu Desh and the MQM chief will not only be the spokesperson but also the head of the government. This scheme is recently JSMM, a Sindh-based nationalist organization, held gatherings and rallies in Sindh province to celebrate its founder and ideologue, late GM Said's 116th birth anniversary. 
Several Sindhi and Mohajir political workers also carried Altaf Hussein's posters on the occasion. The participants raised pro-freedom slogans and said they do not want to live in a terrorist, theocratic and a fascist state of Pakistan. Both Sindhis and Mohajis have for long claimed to have been suffering discrimination and human rights violations at the hands of Pakistani state and its army. In news from Afghanistan, Afghan Chief Executive Abdullah Abdullah on Monday reiterated that peace is not one person's monopoly and is a collective desire demanded by the Afghan people. He said Afghanistan's stance is clear in supporting the peace process and the people of Afghanistan have the right to take a position regarding the peace process. Afghanistan's chief executive Abdullah Abdullah has criticized handling of the peace process with the Taliban and said that peace is not one person's monopoly, but it is a collective desire. While speaking to the Council of Ministers in his office, Abdullah on Monday said that Afghanistan's stance is clear in supporting the peace process and that the Afghan people have the right to take a position regarding the same. Abdullah also criticized remarks suggesting that all peace efforts should be carried out by the State Ministry of Peace and said all parties should be involved in the negotiation team. This comes as the Taliban last week said that the group and the U.S. negotiators met in Doha to discuss the signing of a peace deal and confirmed that the talks were useful and would continue for a few days. The Taliban had earlier said it is prepared to scale down operations. The Afghan government, however, has said ceasefire as a precondition ahead of resumption of formal peace talks. In partially conservative Afghanistan, where people mostly in the countryside believe in old-fashioned traditions and don't allow women to work outside home, a woman is running a restaurant in the country's Pule Kumri city. The restaurant owned by the striving lady not only provides traditional dishes but also serves pizza and burger. In the partially conservative country like Afghanistan, where militancy is rampant, and people mostly in the countryside are not so open-minded. A 30-year-old striving woman has opened a restaurant. The ambitious Geti Anwari owns a restaurant in the Pul A Khumri city, capital of the Restive Baglan province, where armed extremist groups are operational. Believing in the famous proverb that no pain, no gain, Anwari's restaurant not only provides traditional dishes to customers, but also serves Western-style pizza and burger. Anwari started the restaurant alone but now works with 25 people, including five men, and earns reasonable income with pride. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa has acknowledged for the first time that more than thousands of people who disappeared during the country's civil war are dead. He made the remark in a meeting with the UN envoy in capital Colombo recently. Sri Lanka's President Gotabaya Rajapaksa for the first time has admitted that thousands of people missing since the end of the civil war between the government and the Tamil separatist rebels over a decade ago are dead. Gotabaya made the remark in a recent meeting with the United Nations resident coordinator Hannah Singer, according to a statement from his office. Outlining his plans to address the issue of missing persons, Gotabaya explained that these missing persons are actually dead. Most of them had been taken by the LTTE or forcibly conscripted. The families of the missing attest to it, the statement said. After the necessary investigation, steps would be taken to issue death certificates of the missing persons, while their families would be supported, the official media release said. Gotabaya, the former wartime defence secretary, played a key role in ending Sri Lanka's nearly 30-year-long civil war with the Tamil separatist rebels. The Tamils alleged that thousands were massacred during the final stages of the war that ended in 2009. The Lankan army denies the charge, 
claiming it as a humanitarian operation to rid the Tamils of the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam, or LTTE's, control. In news from Nepal, eight Indian tourists who were found unconscious at a resort in central Nepal died while undergoing treatment at a hospital in Kathmandu on Tuesday, police said. The deceased, four adults and four children, were part of a group of 15 people who were visiting a tourist destination near capital Kathmandu. All the eight people from India's Kerala province had stayed in the same room at night and turned on a gas heater to keep warm, suggesting that the cause of the death might be suffocation. Bodies of the deceased were taken for post-mortem. Meanwhile, Indian embassy officials were stationed at the hospital and were providing necessary assistance till the last reports came in. And more news from Nepal, search operations to find seven missing trekkers continued on Tuesday. The trekkers, including four South Koreans, had gone missing following avalanches in Nepal's Annapurna region last Friday. Search and rescue operations for seven missing people continued on Tuesday after they went missing following avalanches in Nepal's Annapurna region last week. Four South Koreans and the three Nepali guides were struck by an avalanche on January 17 along the popular trekking route at the base of Mount Annapurna, the world's 10th highest mountain. Another 200 people, including tourists, guides, helpers, and others who were trapped after an avalanche were rescued and brought to a safer place on Sunday. Rescue center banasa masa pose biskema na. Tio tooli jaya mili bian saare saath baje ko bich mein padhaya hai bana. Unor cha aile devar aile mein bache na. Unor ko device use kare na. Drone bada jaye kun kun thama kiki rasa bani kora jaye sauce kare rasa hai na. Anti spasi second team bani padhaya sun second team se abak puriya ko abak media aur wo unor cha hai na. Mount Annapurna's base camp is known for its spectacular beauty and thousands of trekkers go there every year. The recent avalanches came as the annual trekking season in Nepal, home to eight of the world's 14 highest mountains, including Mount Everest, is drawing to a close. After a series of avalanches in southern Himalayan region killed dozens, India's high-altitude warfare school was seen utilizing the fresh snowfall to train Indian Army soldiers for avalanche rescue operations recently. The school in Jammu Kashmir trained soldiers in avalanche rescue drills, long-range patrols and casualty evacuation. At a time when there is an unending expanse of snow all around in India's Jammu and Kashmir, the country's high-altitude warfare school recently utilized the fresh snowfall to train soldiers for avalanche rescue operations. According to an official from the training school, the army soldiers during the exercise were trained for avalanche rescue drills, special missions, long-range patrols and casualty evacuation. The soldiers were also given survival training for extremely adverse weather conditions. उस वीक के दौरान इन्हें हम हाइल टूर में होने वाली बीमारियां, सिकनेस, इनसे बचाओ और इनको क्योर कैसे किया जाता है इस बारे में बताते हैं। स्टार्टिंग में ये जो ट्रूप्स हैं हमारे, ये अपने नॉर्मल ग्रेडेंट स्लोप्स में ट्रेन करते हैं विथ नो कॉम्बेट लोड। जैसे-जैसे हमारा कोर्स प्रोग्रेस करते जाता है, तो इनका ग्रेडेंट स्लोप्स का बढ़ाते हैं, प्लस इनके कॉम्बेट लोड उठाने की क्षमता भी यहाँ पे हम बढ़ाते हैं। इसके वशात इस कोर्स में इन्हें हम अवलांज रेस्क्यू ड्रिल्स, स्पेशल मिशंस, लॉन्ग रेंज पेट्रोल्स एंड कैजुअल्टी वैकेशन के बारे में भी सिखाते हैं। The training comes as many soldiers deployed along the de facto border line of control have lost their lives in avalanches that hit Jammu and Kashmir this month. The residents in the frigid region are also facing troubles due to closing of roads, extreme cold and losses in farms following heavy snowfall. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.